The following video is brought to you by Amp Pro. As you guys can see, I'm back at the house getting ready to repair this drain. I just cut the sections away that were clogged up. I'm fitting up the new P-trap, trying to figure out exactly where I'm going to place it. I could place it on the inside or outside. I'm just going to put it on the outside like it was before. This is an inline float switch, which you could put right there in the line, or you can turn it 90 degrees and put it right there in the P-trap. Either one of those would be fine. So I'm fitting it up here to the old Ream air handler. This air handler is from 2009. I do believe it's 15 SEER model. I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure it has the digital controls outside. They're a little bit more advanced than just a contactor. It has the board with the integrated. It's almost like a sure switch built into a circuit board. So this T section comes with this float switch. And you put in the fittings as needed. You can put the little bushing on that top side or the side which I'm putting it on, depending on what you need. That bushing just goes down to three quarter inch PVC. As you can see, it all fits together there. I'm holding it in because PVC glue has a tendency to push your fittings out, just like in plumbing. So you need to hold those in for a few seconds so it'll take hold, because if you let it go, it'll start trying to push out a little bit. Now I'm going right down to the P-trap. I'm going to put another T out there to serve as a clean out so you can blow out the drain. This particular float switch also has the feature, little black nozzle. You can put it in there and use nitrogen to blow out the drain. So you can do it either way on this one. I know that little piece might get lost. It actually has a little rubber covering and hook. You can hook it right onto the little standpipe, which is what I do. You don't see it in this video. It's a new feature from these. And I don't remember which float switch this is. I always call this the inline switch. There's inline, there's a 90 degree one that could go in the secondary hole there on the air handler. There's quite a few different ones. I'm also gonna replace the pan switch as well because they were concerned that it didn't work. I'll be testing that in just a moment and you'll see that it actually does work. Here's the finished product, a couple extra elbows, a couple extra couplings. There's the actual float switch, I'm putting it in the top there. It has two wires and it just passes through the R signal or the Y signal depending on what you want to do. Here's the pan switch, but they were concerned it did not work. It does move freely. I have the meter on now, I'm going to put it on continuity. As you can see we have a closed circuit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the float switch upside down and see if the circuit gets cut. And it does, which means it's working properly. There is a possibility that they could get stuck, but it doesn't look like that is the case this time. Now I'm testing out the float switch that's in the inline switch. There you go. Back and forth there. Shaking it around to see if it loses connection because it kind of hesitated there. You can hear how it hesitates a little bit on that one. Powers back onto the air handler, then the blower starts. I do believe this is an X13 blower. Can't tell right now. It could be variable speed. I can't remember. I can't see how many wires are down there. You can count them and figure it out, guys. Pretty good supply temperature. Temperature split looks pretty good, actually. So, looks like we're going to be good to go. Hopefully we're good. Patched a little hole in the ductwork. Oh, happy day. As you can see, we're at the outdoor unit now. It's a ream heat pump. I'm checking only the suction pressure just as a primary check because I want to make sure before Hurricane Florence that we don't have a low suction pressure causing freeze up and making sure we didn't get any water from that sort of thing, which it looks like we didn't because we have 125 plus suction pressure. I poured some water down the drain to prime it up. Put some tape over this spout here just so I can make sure water came out of it. Took the tape off. Proof over here. I took the tape off and let it drain into this hub, which goes down over here. And then drains out up to one of the ditches over there because it floods right here otherwise. So you can see some of the water that came out whenever I had the tape over the top of it. So we should be good. I didn't do a very complete check out here. Just want to check the suction pressure, line temperature, and just make sure that we were in the ballpark because our hurricane is coming. I want to make sure I'm prepared myself. Then I'm going to come back and check these two units at the time of 
they choose, we have convenience. Usually they're a way it works. So I can just come out here and check stuff out. So stay tuned for that. Sorry I didn't get to use the P51s. It's just not appropriate timing because of the storm. But we'll get some video with those coming up real soon. Guys, I'm coming back from that drain job. Pretty simple job. Put it back together. Wired in the switches in series. Poured some water down the drain and watched it go outside to make sure the whole drain was clear. And I also want to prime the trap. When you have a drain that has a trap that's not primed, sometimes it'll have difficulty draining because of all that air pressure coming back through it. It's just like an air return coming back to that blower in an air handler. In most air handlers, not in train where it's a positive pressure. But any air handler where you have a negative pressure on that side, it's gonna draw air through there like a return, like a really small return duct. And it'll get more depending on the static pressure that that drain presents. Meaning if your drain runs 100 feet, it's very difficult to pull air through it because it's so long. It might not have that issue as much as a drain that was four or five foot long where there's lower static pressure on it. It's gonna draw a lot of air through there and cause difficulty draining because all that air is gonna be rushing back through that drain. So what I did is went ahead and primed the trap, which is what anyone should do. And a lot of drains have this issue. Sometimes they evaporate in the winter and fall. And when you fire them up in the spring, you'll have the same issue. But you don't wanna have a situation where you're coil can't drain its condensation because that drain is not primed or the trap is not primed so that's what I did ran the system for a few minutes didn't do an extensive check because we had to go home and prepare for Hurricane Florence it's gonna be a really bad storm I'm not quite sure if we're gonna be able to leave at this point it's a little bit scary but I wish we were a little bit more prepared for it which we're not but you guys keep us in your thoughts and prayers I appreciate that we have a nice brick house. Hopefully it'll hold up just fine. The wind shouldn't be near as bad at our house as it is at the beach. Definitely the people at the beach you should pray for because maybe I'll go into this on the Tuesday night swag giveaway. After Fran, there was widespread devastation because of the wind at the beach, storm surge. After Floyd, there was flooding. This is 97 and 99. But each one of these storms present a different combination of difficulties. And this one looks like it might be one of the worst ones we've ever had. And maybe the worst one since Hurricane Hazel hit, which is a retired hurricane back in the 1950s. A brutal storm. You can look it up online, Google Hurricane Hazel pictures. It just destroyed the North Carolina beaches. I mean, you had four or five rows of houses that were just knocked flat to the ground. So it's a very scary situation. And we'll talk a little bit maybe later about the work that comes out of being in one of these hurricanes because there'll be a lot of work that springs up afterwards. A lot of flooding, a lot of flood damage duct work and package units because we have them on the ground here a lot. A lot of issues widespread. Things are just destroyed. Air conditioners are blown off their stands. Even if they're tied down, a lot of times these storm surges can knock the stands all the way over. So it doesn't matter how well they're tied down for the wind. So we just keep that stuff in mind, guys. There's a lot of people that are gonna be suffering here in North Carolina over the next few weeks and a long time to rebuild. But we're a strong state, we've been through it before, and we'll definitely get through this one as well. 